So, we have done this. We have done this. Oh, son of a bee, thanks. We have done this, slope intercept. We have done this point slope. They both share characteristics, but I believe so. Joke time. They both come from general form, which is a major point. Get it? Yes, sir. Get it? All right. They both come from general form. General form is this. Now, there's a problem here that always screws kids up, even when they've seen it before. Normally, the letter that is with X is the slope, right? So we write it as M. Is that an M? That's an A, Kush. Is that A and M? No. So is this the slope? No, because it's not an M. Okay? So, general form is the... Are you guys done? Because I hate to interrupt. It's totally rude to interrupt when people are talking. So finish your conversation and the other 25 of us will wait. Oh, but it was important enough to be talking two minutes ago. Why isn't it important enough to be talking now? Right. Shut up when I'm talking. Okay. So, general form is what we have to start from. It is starting from scratch. It is not going to give us a slope unless we move it around a little. However it does still contain X's and Y's. So if you have a point from a graph, 5, negative 4, for example, that is an X, and it can still go there. That is a Y, and it can still go there. But it isn't the same as dealing with the ones we already have dealt with. Now, are there some rules about general form? A must be positive. And the other rule, A, B, and C must be integers. Which means no fractions or decimals. Now, were we allowed fractions and decimals over here? Are we allowed fractions and decimals in the two we've already studied? Of course we are, because M was often a fraction, wasn't it? And every fraction is just a decimal, right? So, when we're in general form, we're not. Now, the reason we have general form, because some kid always asks, why do we have general form when we can graph these right away? General form allows us to do other math later. Okay? I don't start with general form because it requires you to do more algebra. I start with these guys because they're easier to graph. And this is a unit on graphing. But as we move forward, we're going to get away from graphing and be dealing more in algebra. And when we're dealing in algebra, 
Fractions and decimals screw us up. So we like to work with general form. Everybody good? All right. So here I have general form. 3x minus 2y plus 8 equals 0. Easy peasy. There's your A. There's your B. There's your C. Everything's cool. Now, if I wanted to graph this, it's a bit of a pain. I either have to do a table of values or I have to find the X and Y intercepts or I can do what we're about to do here, which is use algebra to make it look like something we're comfortable with. Now, I have given you that because that's the easiest thing to graph from. So how do I make that look like that? What's the difference? There's still X's and Y's in both. There's still a constant number in both. The only difference is Y is isolated. So what do we do to move stuff around? All we have to do to make this graphable is isolate Y. Now, a lot of kids cannot understand that y equals mx plus b is the exact same thing as mx plus b equals y. Please tell me that you, 28, are not that lot of kids. You understand that these two are the same thing. The reason I am stressing this is that great many students feel they have to leave the Y on the left. When they leave the Y on the left, that means they're moving a bunch of stuff. And a great many of you do not pay attention to detail enough and move things poorly. And when you move things poorly, you end up with the wrong answer. And then, of course, you refuse to check your answers and then you say, I'm bad at math. It's not that you're bad at math. It's because you're not paying attention to details. So, what is easier to move here? Should I move two things or one thing? What would you rather do? You're helping your parents move out of their house. Do you want to pick up two boxes or one? Thank you, Harv. Even though you go to the gym? I'm just kidding, Harvey. <laughs> right? You want to move one thing. So if I move that Y, I'm going to end up with 3X plus 8 equals 2Y. Now, believe me, there are kids that think this is not getting me anywhere closer to that. I don't know why they think that, but they do. Don't be those kids. How will I now isolate Y? I will divide by 2, and then I will do it everywhere else. And I will get 3 over 2x plus 4 equals Y. And believe me, there are kids that would say that this is wrong. Is it? No, y is isolated, isn't it? So do I know the slope? Do I know the y, y intercept? Yes. Now some kids will say, oh, okay, but y's got to be here. So they'll move all of this over to here and then change all the signs. I marked that at least five or six times on a test on this unit. Kids that think they got to move it all and then change all the signs. I don't know where they get it from, but they do. So now if I was going to graph this, where would I go? I'd go up to one, two, three, four. I'd give myself a slope of three halves, which would be up three and, and right two or one, two, three, and left two. And there's my line. It's just algebra. Go slowly and pay attention to detail. Now, 
you will notice right on the very next question, I'm getting away from general form, yes? Because it's not the important thing here. The important thing here is the algebra, and we're going to apply everything to everything. Before I go any further, I need to remind you or tell you that this looks very similar to general form, yes? This is general form's ugly cousin, standard form. And the only difference is it's AX plus BY equals C. There's no zero. You keep the X and the Y's on one side and the constant on the other side. That's the only reason. They call that one standard form as opposed to general form. Okay? All right. So here we have our question. I want slope intercept for that. Is it any different? Even though it looks different, are we going to do anything differently? What do we do to get into slope-intercept? What has to happen? Isolate Y. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Nothing else matters. To get slope-intercept form, you isolate Y, which means things have to move, which means you have to do algebra. Did I tell you the mermaid joke? I didn't. Why was the mermaid embarrassed in math class? Her algebra was showing. Okay. This whole pic, you, yeah, I know, guys. Where's the, he laughed because he knows good comedy. I had already told you that? Oh, all right. Okay, let's do another ocean joke. Why was the beach wet? The seaweed. The seaweed. The sea urinated upon the ground, so the sand was wet. The seaweed. It's funny because seaweed is an actual word. I don't know what you call urination, Harvey, but one of the words I use for urination is weed. Not weed as in dope, weed as in I urinated. I pass liquid through my wee-wee, so I weed. You can't relate. You want to rethink what you just said there? <laughs> Calm him down, Zayaj, because I still don't think he knows what he just said. I'm not. You're the one that said you cannot relate to passing urine through your wee-wee. That's exactly what you said. Everyone heard you. I have it recorded. I said, I passed urine through my wee-wee, so I weed. And you said, and I quote, I can't relate. Everyone heard you. But that's not what you said. You said, I can't relate, period. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm giving you the option to take it back. Okay. That's fine. What should I move in order to isolate Y here? I should move the three. Now, Again, a lot of students will write this and then say, I'm not in slope-intercept form. I don't know what to do because the X isn't first. Don't be those kids because isn't this just The same as negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 8. Of course it is. Now what must I do? Divide by 4? Negative 4. Which again will get me, what is negative 3 divided by negative 4? Positive 3 quarters x. And what is 8 divided by negative 4? Negative 2. And now I can graph. Negative 2, up 1, 2, 3, right 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, left 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Zoom. Yeah? Yeah. Now, once again, notice we have a variation of general form, which means I can apply all kinds of math to it. So we're going to graph it. But this time, I want the x and y intercepts. What is every x-intercept? x, 0. What is every y-intercept? 0, y. If I am seeking an x, what happens to that y? It disappears. 5x equals 10. What's x? So I put a dot at 2. If I'm seeking y, what happens to that x? And I get 2y equals 10. What does y equal? 5. Now you will notice what of those three in your mind is the easiest one to work with. Well, I find that using x and y intercepts with general form is very easy because you get to cross one out. That's where general form is handy. It'll give you an x and a y intercept very quickly. Which means, if it's a real life situation, it gives you the boundaries very quickly, doesn't it? Because in real life, often there isn't negative IVs and DVs. So general form is very handy for that. Everybody good? Spec. Spectacular. So, on page 147, write down an example of the equation of a line in each form. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to give you two points on the graph. You must take those two points and create an equation for that line in all all three forms. I'm not going to bother with standard form. Just general form. Just general form. Thank you. I like it when you guys get the jokes. <laughs> I can't relate. Those are your two points. I need three equations. You decide how to approach that. Think of everything you know about forms, about algebra. Talk to your neighbor. See if you can figure it out. How did you start? Pardon me? How did you start? Slope. That's absolutely how you should start because that's the only thing you can find from that right away, right? So, because you have two X and two Ys, obviously you would find slope first, which is 4 plus 7 over 2 minus 5, which is 11 over negative 3, right? So now we have a slope. What's the easiest form to work with now? Now that I have a slope. You have three choices. General form, slope, intercept, and point slope. Which one should I use? I'll say it again. You have general form, slope, intercept form, and point slope form. Which one should I use? Point slope form. Why? Because I have a slope and two points. Why would I not use point slope form when I have two points with which to work? No, 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 I'm not. I'm just a regular old fella. So, huh? I don't act like I'm older than I am. I'm 44. It's past halfway. Halfway statistically in Canada is 78 years for a man. Halfway is 39, 39. 
No, 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 no. Statistically, the end of the road is 78. So halfway is 39. I'm past 39. Therefore, I'm past halfway. If halfway on one side you are young, on the other side you are old. I'm in the middle. Yes. That's what old people say when they don't want to be old. They say, I'm middle aged. You're 62. You're going to live till you're 100. No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, but I know people in their 60s that are like, oh, I'm just in late middle age. Oh, yeah, you're going to live till you're 124? No, you're not. So if I double that, I'm going to be 88, right? Yeah, that's double my age. That's. Okay. Why? What could I write here? I could write negative four equals, what would I write here? Negative 11 thirds x hmm. I'm using the 4. So it would be x minus 2. That's option 1. What is option 2? y plus 7 equals negative 11 thirds x minus 5. Either one is acceptable because I have two different points and I got a slope so I'm good. So that covers point-slope form. What do I need to do to get the slope-intercept form? What do I need to do? I have to what, Kush? I have to isolate Y. So let's do it. What's got to move? The 7. If we're working with this one, I'll use the same shade of blue. Y equals negative 11 thirds x minus 5 minus 7. Is that slope-intercept form yet? What's, what do I do? How would that look like slope-intercept form? What has to disappear? The brackets. How do I get rid of those brackets? Starts with a D, ends with an E, has istribute in the middle. Distribute. Y equals negative 11 thirds X plus 55 over 3. Barf! And then minus 7. But I can't do that. I can't go to the bathroom until I add those fractions. It's 21 over 3, right? Because 21 divided by 3 is 7. What's 55 minus 21? Y equals 11, negative 11 thirds X. 55 minus 21 is 34 over 3. Agreed? Now, that is slope-intercept form. If I do this to this, what will I get? The same thing. Now, the last form I need, I've got my point slope. I've got my slope intercept. What's the last one I need? Yes, sir. How will I get general form here? What isn't allowed in general form? I got to have them all on the same side. That's one thing that's not allowed. Are these all on the same side? So let's move them. 11 thirds X plus Y minus 34 thirds equals zero. Now what's not allowed? What? I'm allowed to have negatives anywhere except at the beginning. A is positive, so I'm okay. What else isn't allowed? Sihaj. We're not allowed fractions. I got some fractions there. How do I get rid of divide by three? Times everything by three. To get 11x plus 3y minus 34 equals 0. And there's my third form.
Did you guys mix the ginger ale and the Coke? Is it bubbly? Yeah, yeah. Well, then you should get a form or a font. All right. Okay, everybody's cool? What we just did there was actually really, really hard because of the fractions. And you all know that I like to do something really hard at the beginning so the rest of the stuff is easy, yes? So... Let's do an easy one. Get that into general form. General form is AX plus BY plus C equals zero. A is positive and no fractions and no brackets. Now, before you start, I want to give you a, a gift of math. It is a gift. If I gave you, don't write this down, if I gave you this equation, 3, sorry, 14 equaled 7 X, what would you do? You would divide by 7, right? Everyone agrees? Because this is saying 7 times X, right? Okay. What is this saying? What is that saying right there? If you were to say it in English. No, no, no. Just what's highlighted. 2 thirds times x plus 2. Correct? Everyone agrees? So isn't this the exact same thing as if I had just written 7x? Right? Everybody's following me? Okay, so since we know what to do with 7x, do we know what to do with 2 thirds x? What bothers me there? The fraction. Could I get rid of it? How would I get rid of that 3? If I multiplied by 3, I'd get 2x. And then what would I do to get rid of that 2? I'd divide by 2. So... What can I do here to make it look prettier? Get rid of the fraction, which means doing what, Zaihash? Multiply by 3. So what happens to that 3 and that 3? They're gone. But I have now changed the right-hand side of the equation. What must I do to the left-hand side? I must multiply by 3. What's 3 times y? Minus 12. Now, am I very close to general form? I've gotten rid of the fraction. All I got to do is distribute that 2, right? 3y minus 12 equals 2x plus 4. Now, what has to move? What's the only thing that is a rule right now? No negatives where? With the what letter? With the X, right? No negatives with the X, because that's going to end up being our A, right? So is that guy already positive? So should he move? Even though we normally write it on the left, should I move him? No. So I'm going to be left with 2X. What's going to happen to that 3? Negative 3Y. And what's going to happen to that negative 12? But there's already four there, so what is it? Plus 16, and now I'm done. Now, listen to me. Remember I said I was giving you a math gift? That was this. Because if I don't teach you that, because I used to not teach that, because I thought kids would know it automatically. Because 
you guys learn steps instead of what you're actually doing. Does everybody understand the difference? You learn, if it looks like this, I do this. You don't learn why. I spend a lot of time trying to get you to see why. When you see two-thirds X plus two, most of you, and I didn't give you a chance to do this this time, most of you want to get rid of those brackets by distributing, right? Which gets you two-thirds X plus four-thirds. And then you're like, oh, fractions. And then you get scared. Now, of course, you could just multiply that by three now, right? But in my experience, when kids get to here, if they try to distribute a fraction, they flip out and they start doing things wrong because they're seeing a fraction. Everybody follow me? When you are faced with this, get rid of that denominator first. And then just multiply the other side by three. It will make your lives easier as you go forward. Don't try to distribute the fraction. Especially if you have something that looks like this. Get rid of that three first. But remember, that multiply doesn't affect in there. It only deals with this. Just like when you have 7x, oops, equals 14, the division only affects the 7. X stays there. Everybody cool? All right. So now you've done a really hard one with crazy points that got us fractions. And you've done a really easy one that basically fell to our answer, right? Like, if I hadn't been here and I stopped, I stopped right there, right there, all of you would have been able to continue on, right? Because it just follows logically. I mean, what else are you going to do? I got to make it look like that. There's brackets. I'll get rid of the brackets. It's, uh, 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 right? General form. Okay. Prove it. There's your equation. Point slope form. I want to see it in all three others. Well, you know standard form, right? If you have general form, you have standard form. You just move the C. So I don't really care if you do standard form. Everybody good? Go. 99 cent Frosties and nobody brought me one? I see. Okay. You guys had better hope that not one Frosty cup gets left in here. What's three plus four times two? I'm giving you seconds. Go to the bathroom. I love this. I'm doing it next year. And I'll give all of you credit. I'll say you came up with it. I'll say my summer school class said too many people are going to the bathroom, Mr. Myers. You need to make them do some math to go. Huh? No, they won't. Because I won't say any names. No, because what I'll do is I'll say that my summer school class recognized how important class time was and almost never went to the bathroom. There was good comedy in there. I don't care about the math. It was only this part. Yeah, it was only the last little bit. But that was what I was complimenting you all. If somebody watched this, they wouldn't hear about how I think you're that smart. Now they're going to think that I think you're dummies. I don't think you're dummies. You got 25 minutes to work on page 148. Now listen. Hey. Hey. Oh, smart move, changing it from bathroom. Nice. She's the first person that didn't lie. Because there's no way you guys go to the bathroom that much. All right. Uh, Well, I don't need to record now.